Hey guys, I am super excited to be filming my what did YouTube pay me in the first <laughs> what did YouTube pay me the first month I was monetized video. This is coming so much faster than I ever anticipated and I am just wildly excited to be doing this for you. I when I started out on this journey, I was binging these types of videos trying to figure out what it's going to look like and I never really found one that was a really tiny YouTuber in my niche of like lifestyle vlogs and self-improvement. So I really wanted to put this out there for those of you who are also in our little niche and are curious about the exact same things. If you have a goal of being monetized, this is gonna be inf information that you find interesting. And for those of you who are just here for the juicy info, it's $88.78. That's what the answer is. But moving forward, we can talk about, did I cheat getting to the threshold of the YouTube partnership program? It It's definitely an unfair advantage, but I wouldn't say I actually cheated at it. So speaking of the threshold for the partnership program to apply, um, if you're really into wanting to know the analytics, you know the answer to this. But if you don't, just super briefly, I'm not going to go really into it. It is 1,000 subscribers, 4,000 hours of watch time in 365 days. There is a threshold if you're just a shorts person. I believe it's 50 million views in 90 days, which seems bonkers. Let me check. Um, I wrote it's 10 million. That's way more reasonable and yet wildly unreasonable. 10 million views of shorts in 90 days. Um, I don't do shorts, so I didn't care about that very much. So the advantage I had coming into my channel is this channel has been around for 12 years, I think, but I've only been actually posting my content for since October 31st. I uploaded my first video on Halloween and then just started plotting along with this specific niche. 12 years ago, I uploaded a video of me bringing home my twins in their little strawberry outfits and it was super adorable. I had a couple other videos of the twins when they were tiny babies because we didn't live close to family and my intention was to just have a way for them to see the twins grow. Uh, then I abandoned the channel, completely forgot about it, and one day looked and said, I had like 780 subscribers already. I had, I was well on my way to that first threshold and I thought, okay, let's use this channel. Instead of starting from scratch, let's just use all of these backlog subscribers who, you know, subscribe to see a cute kid video and now all of a sudden they're going to see my messy, messy life and probably unsubscribe. Sorry, everyone. I hope you stick around. Um, so what I didn't have an advantage of was the watch time. So that baby video, the bringing home the babies, it currently has over, let me see, 363,000 views, which is crazy, but they're just a couple of seconds each view and it's over well over a decade. So YouTube only counts the last 365 days. So on November 1st of this year, my first video that I uploaded starting this journey will fall off in the watch hour time. With that twins video, I was starting out with the advantage of 274.2 hours, which left me 3,725.8 watch hours that I need to get in the next year in order to apply for monetization. I picked the lifestyle niche because that's what interested me and you should do what you're interested in. I am a wretched, wretched housekeeper. I am a trad wife, I stay at home, I homeschool my kids, I am very loosely defined a homemaker um, and I want to be better, I wanna get better at this and so I am trying to do self-improvement, get healthier, home improvement, be a better homemaker and just all sorts of different things. Um, I want to document our homeschooling journey, which we've been doing for several years, but we also love to road school, which is us traveling and schooling at the same time. So instead of just talking about Plymouth Rock, go look at Plymouth Rock. It's actually incredibly fun. So when I was researching this topic, I stumbled upon a woman who was cleaning her very, very messy house. And she was unapologetic, she was raw, she was authentic, and she discussed how, just discussing about how her mental health made it a little bit harder for her to keep a tidy home. And I could completely relate with that. And so I took a deep breath and I thought, 
can I expose my deep shame to everyone and take people along with me on a journey to being better? And I, you know, really considered it deeply and bit the bullet and uploaded my first video of me tackling my incredibly messy home. And it did remarkably well. It resonated so deeply with some people, um, probably disgusted a lot more people, but even disgust will draw views and it drew over 44,000 views. This video is responsible for most of my subscribers, for almost the entirety of my 4,000 watch hours, which I hit. And it was, I don't know, it was amazingly rewarding to lay myself out there, show myself raw, be authentic, and see that I can be successful at it. I am not, you know, it was worth the risk. So I hit my monetization threshold in just 56 days. Um, as I got closer, I was researching further and further, trying to find somebody with a small YouTube channel who was in the lifestyle vlogs, who would open up their analytics to people. I wanted to see, you know, I realized there's something called a CPM and an RPM and what are those two things and why are they different? And I really couldn't find it. I could find people in tech niche or um, like software review and the people who were in the lifestyle vlogs that were willing enough to open their analytics were um, massive YouTubers. And so it's not relatable. My 1700 subscribers is not over 300,000 subscribers. It's not going to look the same. So I thought to myself, okay, when I hit it, I'm going to open this up because what if there is another stay at home mom who is tidying her house and talking about home decor and, you know, managing her small children. And she wants to know what would this look like? Is this viable? How much would I get paid? So this is for you. We're going to get into the nitty gritty of my analytics and I am going to briefly talk about um, some terms, but I highly recommend that you go find a YouTuber who is smarter about what the back end of YouTube looks like and watch some of their videos to get a much more clear idea of what this is because I still have questions about my analytics. Some of them still don't really make sense. So CPM, cost per mil, cost per thousand people looking at your video. This is the amount that advertisers are going to pay AdSense, which is what runs the YouTube advertisement thing. Um, it's how much they're willing to pay for their ads to be placed and watched for a thousand watches. Um, then the RPM is our cut of it. So what they say is that the cut is 45% goes to YouTube, 55% goes to the creator. So the CPM is divided 45 and 55, the 55, that's our RPM, our revenue per mil, our, how much do you get per thousand views that you have on a video? If your video is over eight minutes long, you can embed ads in the mid roll. Like you can just put them in. Um, you can choose where you place your own ads, but I just let YouTube choose it themselves because YouTube is in the business of making as much money as possible. So I imagine that they are going to be very cautious about overplacing ads or where they're going to place the ads. They want as many people to watch as I want them to watch. So they're going to not stuff it like crazy. They're going to have better analytics. They understand what the tolerance is for who to watch how many ads. So I just let them decide, okay, yeah, let's get into it. I'm going to show you my back end analytics. This is what the back end of the dashboard looks like. If you have a YouTube studio, it has all of these different options for you. You can see your latest upload, which mine was a live stream. I did my first, first ever live stream and it was awkward, but not as awkward as I thought. It it was fun and terrifying, but I didn't have a heart attack and that was really exciting. It will show you your current subscribers. I have 1,703. I really feel like if I get to that 780, I will have 1,000 real subscribers and I'll be a real YouTuber. Um, and so I am just super excited for that milestone. I just... I still feel like I'm cheating somehow. I'm gaming the system. Deep breath, let's do this guys. Okay, let's go down to my analytics. 
you can see here that it will constantly default to the last 28 days. So over here, if you go up to the advanced mode right here, you can do a custom timeline. I'm actually gonna set my custom timeline to a little bit previous to um, when I got monetized because I, I want to show you the charts with that in there. So it won't affect the, the numbers. It will just give a more clear, is that correct phrasing? It will give a more clear view of what I I'm talking about in certain areas. And I know that because I've already recorded this video one time, but the audio was messed up. So, okay, analytics. <laughs> analytics. Okay. Here's the overview in the selected period. So my one month, I had 35.8 thousand views. My watch time was 3.5 thousand hours, um, 296 new subscribers. Thanks, you guys and an estimated revenue of $88.78. So let's talk about where that came from. Oh, disclaimer, I got monetized Christmas morning, 6 a.m. I received the email saying that I was monetized. November, December is like the sweepstakes of YouTube. It is the gravy train. Apparently, you creators can see up to like four times their usual income. It is probably why a lot of people do vlogmas. Um, it just, it's, you make bank apparently. And I, it will reflect in here. You'll see in those six days in December, I did have a video doing exceptionally well still, but in those six days in December, I was pulling it in, in my opinion. Okay, um, we can go over to revenue and look at this. So here it will show you how much I'm making ongoing. December, I made $47.48. In January, I made $51.93. It's still ongoing. You have to make $100 to get a paycheck and watch. Okay, I'll just show you this really quickly. Look at how close I am. I'm so close to getting a paycheck. Oh. Maybe I'll get 59 cents today and then we'll actually have it and I will be so freaking excited. Okay, we have to reset this because I got too excited to show you something pretty ridiculous. Okay, so that was thrilling, it's exciting. I'm gonna get a paycheck soon. Okay, so if you see over here, I am making zero dollars, zero dollars, zero dollars. I get monetized Christmas morning, $10.33. The next day I got $10.86. It was really exciting. Here I have a video that is the, the one video, my vulnerable cleaning. It's still doing massive amounts of work, but it does pretty much immediately drop off after I get monetized. So um, you will see that my income takes quite the hit, but I am so grateful. It, it got me over those hurdles so much faster than I expected. So then the following day, I get $8.30. We're just gonna walk down these so you can see them. $6.01, $6.02, and now we're really pulling it down. Um, that video is essentially not being watched anymore. $3.69, and now we're into the tail end of December and January where apparently you're getting a lot less revenue. And so here I, I'm just getting over a dollar. Here's 54 cents. I post my, that video does not do well. Transforming chaos into calm. Oh, the new extreme cleaning clutter mess. So these little play buttons, these are when I publish something. This video does not do well, so it is not responsible for this situation here. But I post this new video and now we're back up over several dollars. Coming down, you can see now this is where I've stabilized. So this from January 11th on, this is basically where I anticipate my income every day coming in as, and it is more or less, less a dollar, around a dollar, less than a dollar. Down here, you can see it's 45 cents. Um, and then down here, my lowest paid day, 10 cents. Um, but we do get around a few, few cents, maybe a dollar for the rest of the month. Um, so part of this is I think that you just get paid less in January. And another thing is that I'm just getting way fewer views. Um, and so I did watch, oh, in the beginning, I saw somebody who commented, she's like, you don't really want a viral video early on 
in your YouTube career because it just kind of messes with your head and it messes with how you you think that you're doing. And it, and I thought that was such a ridiculous thing to say previously. I was like, um, why wouldn't you want something to do exceptionally well and pull you forward? And yeah, it does really mess with your head and you have to really like, realistically getting a few hundred views, 200 to 400 views on a video when you're such a baby creator is stinking amazing. It's incredible. Um, but like that 44,000 views, you're just like, oh, why aren't the rest of them getting 44,000 views? Like, why is it not blowing up like that initial one? So you have to readjust and I've readjusted. This is what the money looks like that I am getting paid. Let's go into CPM and RPM because that's going to be most relevant to those who are in this niche trying to figure out what their money will look like. So Here's my top earning content down here. If you can see it, the whole house clean. We're not gonna look at that one yet because that one will look weird. It will skew everything. So I'm gonna pick something that was monetized the entire time and did well. It was published January 5th. So in my monetization timeframe and it's in January. So it's not like a sweepstakes um, monetary thing. So. It will show you how it was performing. This one got over 5,000 views, 903 watch hours, 88 subscribers. Thanks guys. And the estimated revenue of its lifetime is $21.68. So click down to see more. And I'm going to add in the metrics that we care about. We're going to add in CPM. We are going to add in RPM. And then there's a playback based CPM that is significantly higher than um, what it says CPM here. And we have to, you know what? Screw it, let's look that up, friends. Let's look up CPM versus playback-based CPM. Okay, so playback-based CPM is the amount of money an advertiser pays for a thousand views and it ignores all the non-monetized ads. So ads that are not displayed or skipped for some viewers. Okay, super interesting. Okay, that explains why it is significantly higher than the other one. So let's go back to my info. Okay, we are going to delete this one, hide metric, and we are only going to put our playback base CPM and our RPM. My face is just, I'm so sorry guys. Okay, so. As you can see here, it's January. The playback-based CPM is $11.14. That is what AdSense gets. Part of that goes to YouTube, part of that goes to me. The part that went to me is $4.12. So that's for every thousand times it was viewed. It was viewed just over 5,000 times. So my paycheck, so four times five is 20, and then a little extra. So the estimated revenue for this video is 21 dollars and 68 cents okay so this is when i am trying to build my new desk and it turns out it's a fire pit that i ordered it gets 253 views which is um much lower for for my channel um it tends i can get like small views like that but then eventually they kind of start creeping up a little bit higher but this one just did not mm -hmm. hit well um the playback based cpm $8.94 and then my take from that would have been $2.76 if a thousand people had watched it, but it didn't. So I got 70 cents for that video. Here is where it's a little weird. Like clearly $2.76 is not 55% of $8.74 and I simply do not know enough to be able to explain that. Okay, let's show you guys one more, I think. And because also clearly you can see that CPMs vary from video to video, niche to niche, person to person. Um, and this will give you kind of a idea. Let's see if I can do an overall, see more. Dun, da, da. Okay, playback base. Okay, you can see them all lined up here. This would be a pretty decent thing to screenshot. Some of these videos are posted prior to me getting my monetization. Like this one, Whole House Clean. This is my big one that was posted well before and it's, um, it earned me quite a bit in December and then just dropped off 
but you can see my CPMs go 1765. That's in December, guys. That is during the big sweepstakes time, especially here at $24.35 on the Reveal and Renew. That's primarily in December. Um, 1744, another December baby. And then here, the $11.09, that falls within just January, 920 just January, 966 January. Okay, so it looks like a lot of this is a January situation. Um, this one, transforming my closet. I think this is a December one and it is remarkably low. And then my son's watching him be super excited over getting his gift. It's only $3.82, but this is a very, very short video. It's one minute and 30 seconds. So you can see how Having a slightly longer video, which would give you more chances for ads, does really pull up that playback based CPM. I don't intentionally force my videos to be over eight minutes. As you can see here on these times down here, um, they are just naturally longer. It takes a long time to clean my whole house or do a one room reset, so they are naturally longer. Maybe this, is it possible to refresh my porch? I was concerned it was going to be under eight minutes, but it did naturally land slightly above eight minutes. I bet you if it was seven minutes and 49 seconds, I would have extended it though. Hopefully you have a better idea of what maybe your CPM will look like if you were in my niche, um, that you have a better idea of what the RPM would look like. I am still a little confused on why it is not 55% and it's something I'm going to look up later. I just... I don't know, I just haven't really felt that driven to look into it just yet. I was hoping that after some time came through, it would kind of flush out because I'm now in a place where my videos are monetized for their whole lifespan and not just a little bit. And so yeah, if you guys have any questions, please ask them if there's something that you wanted to see that I forgot to show you that would have been interesting or useful. Also ask that. I am happy to be as transparent as possible on this. And it's really funny because people seem to think, oh, you know, you make so much money. And it's like, no, but I could be doing it for free and I'm not. And so I am really excited for what I am getting. Oh, um, and I didn't talk about the other sources of income. There's memberships, there's um, working with other brands. Uh, I do have memberships open and uh, I do have a member. It's one of my dad's friends and it's super adorable. It feels like when you're a little girl trying to sell Girl Scout cookies, so your dad takes them to work and all of his coworkers feel obligated to buy. And so <laughs> I'm glad that doesn't go away. I'm 42 and I'm still, you know, having my dad's friends support me and it's super adorable and I love it so much. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. That is my backend analytics. I look forward to doing a six month update and you guys just let me know if you have any questions. I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. It'll probably be a whole house clean because as we can see, that is where my bread is buttered. I love you so much. Bye.